Hey guys, what's going on? Big Mike, the 717 all back with you here. So uh, getting back into it, so we have the last two points races of the season. Unfortunately, the turbo bike, because of timing and everything like that, I'm not tearing into it. I, I went to pull the inspection plate off the side of the transmission to allow me to check the shift forks. Unfortunately, one bolt is right behind the frame. So from the looks of it, we're going to have to pull the motor to get to that inspection window. I put a dial indicator on uh, to try to check for any any movement from the output shaft. Based on what I did, it's like a couple, like maybe three thousandth of an inch. It has a little bit of flex, but the biggest thing is I can't really tell that the spot that I had it on, the output shaft or the collar that I was using for that has a little bit of rust and i'm thinking that that couple thousandth might just be it going around and touching like a rust spot or two here and there so i'm gonna double check it but honestly it doesn't seem like it's the output shaft i think it is just a shift fork so we might be in the clear uh to getting the bike set up a little bit better uh just pull the forks out put a brand new set of shift forks in um and yeah for the most part just running it as is i think will be pretty good but we went ahead and got pinky all ready to go i have two step hooked up and what is it two steps good went over the bike top to bottom made sure everything was good compressor and everything's still doing good i thought we had a battery issue here the um i put the original two-step box back on it and tried messing with the wiring so what i ended up finding was that the two-step box was staying on constantly and i thought that i fried another battery here it was just drawing power so i took the two-step or the msd launch master off the turbo bike put it on pinky everything works fine we have it wired through the clutch switch so all i have to do is pull the clutch in to engage a two-step let the lever out kind of like a gen 2 and the rpms will climb and she'll go from there uh, i also i don't remember if i put this in another video so there's a two toggle switches that dale put on this bike uh before jeff got it and one is a tune so there's your pass tune there's a burnout tune well here my issues were that the bike was in a neutral tune or the burnout tune so it wouldn't rev out to 11,000 rpm well, I have that set now. I have a little uh, sticky note or like a, not a sticky note. I have a label maker. I put a label there said up is pass, down is burnout. We're going to try to get the uh, ECU editor software. So hopefully we can start tuning on that um, either later this year or even going into next season. But... Yeah, we're going to roll up to Beaver, our last two races of the evening or of the season before finals. We are trying to clinch a spot in finals, but we're going to see what happens. And yeah, be right back.
After that, I can honestly say we picked up 30 points, um, which bumped us up in the 10th, and we were holding 10th pretty good. Um, the only thing is, or that I can say is a great takeaway from this, so we got two test passes and then three full passes. Not full, but like three passes on the track. So our first two time shots, we ran a 631 with an 8 and then a 633 with a seven, both at 110 miles an hour, go into round one. Uh, we went a dial to 634, we ran a 33 with a five, but the guy that we were against went red. So thank God that happened, so we ended up going into the next round. I uh, went into round two, dialed a 33. I rolled out, went a 35 with an eight at 104. So I rolled out a little early because I lost six mile an hour. Um, we did pretty good. Uh, the margin of finish on that race, which was against Kenny, which was the guy that I had to beat to get the 10 spot. Uh, the margin of finish was double O two across the stripe. Um, Kenny ran dead on. He went, he dialed 560, went a 560 with a five. So great race. Then we went on to third round. Third round, of course, I get lined up with Jeff Santine, who currently, right now this year, is like the hottest uh, bracket racer because I think he's going on like almost 20 wins this season. And he tripled at XDA the week the weekend before. And yeah, Jeff's on a freaking roll this year, but Jeff's the one that we bought the pink bike from. So figures, we get to race him in round three. Unfortunately, I was sleeping on the tree. I still wasn't used to letting the lever fly. My reaction times weren't all that great, but I knew that I didn't want to go red and figures I went late. And we ran a 32. So we dialed a 32, we ran a 32 with a five. So we were right there, went 109 miles an hour. And our reaction time is what did it. The The margin of finish from Jeff and his reaction time, if I would have cut even double Jeff's light, which was a one, which was a point one, I think just one, one, uh, point one, one on the light. If I would have cut double his light, we would have caught, we would have beat Jeff, but things happen. I was a little late on the tree, but all I can say as a major takeaway out of this past weekend was the bike stayed so consistent. The 60 foots the entire weekend. I mean, mostly I'll go from Sunday because we got more passes with better weather. First pass was a one five flat. We want a one five Oh eight. 1505, 1506, 1501. 60 foots were within eight foul all weekend. And then our times, so we want a 631 with an eight, 633 with a seven, 33 with a five, 35 with an eight rolling out, and then a 32 with a five. I can't complain about that. Pinky is doing what she needs to do. But unfortunately, Went out in round three against Jeff. Jeff went on to actually win it against Ethan Charcala. Ethan, actually, this was his, I believe, third or fourth uh, race running Abusa. Uh, Ethan was the one that I ran the Grom earlier in the season. Um, unfortunately, his dad got in a car accident, and he's not able to race. So Ethan stepped up and decided to start running the Abusa for the rest of the season. And he went on to the final against Jeff. And I believe if I remember right, I think Ethan went under, giving Jeff the win. But great weekend of racing. Um, now kind of the big ender for me. Uh, I waited to do this video just because. Uh, I was waiting to hear back because I locked in the number 10 spot. There were a few guys that weren't going to be going. 
Well, that changed. Only one guy didn't go. So unfortunately, I was one spot shy of going to finals in Pittsburgh. So it is what it is, guys. Unfortunately, we're not going to get to go to finals. But I wish if any of the Beaver guys actually watch these videos, I wish you all guys luck at the bracket finals in Pittsburgh. I wish I could be there with you guys. And yeah, bring home that trophy, boys. That's about all I can say. But I'll see you guys next. Remember, ride safe, ride smart, always wear a helmet. And also, just because I know that I already went past it, drop a like, drop a comment, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next one. Thank you.